now um, deal with the take home exercise. Okay. Um, so uh, take home exercise eight. Um, this take home exercise, I'll, I'll, I'll drag it down here um, so that we can, uh, we can put it up on the screen where needed. Um, so this take home exercise, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, quite right. Yeah, thanks. Here, um, this take home exercise um, built on uh, the impetus, the theme we were exploring at the end of class last time. So at the end of class last time, we had created a alternative scenario to um, to, to compare with a, a, a default scenario called the baseline scenario. That terminology is standard. Baseline normally means kind of default. It's often the status quo. It's kind of the reference scenario invariably, the one to which you refer when you're comparing results because we all want a, a standard approach, right? Um, we, we, we need to say as much something weighs, we have to say how much is the weigh relative to some standard kilogram, for example, or to measure something, we say how long it is compared to a, a meter length or what kind of thing. Um, and so we have this baseline scenario. And last time we came up with an alternative scenario uh, that involved what? What difference did it have from the baseline? Does anyone remember? It differed, yeah, um, cessation, exactly. Um, Matthias uh, notes the cessation rate was higher. Specifically, it was 50% higher. Um, we, we posited that people would try to quit six times a year instead of four times a year. And then we saw the outcomes. And we were particularly looking at outcomes in terms of what? Outcomes from the model that were epiphenomenal, somewhere around here. Um, around here that I said at be phenomenal. Um, and uh, what was that main outcome we looked at last time? Anyone? Yes, Tony. Sorry? Yeah, so, um, so it was uh, what fraction of people had heart disease, right? Um, and to do that, we had, like this gets into implementation detail, we had added a, a statistic to any logics population, but basically we had an outcome measure. Great. Um, and so for this take home exercise, um, I asked you to, to take this uh, further. I asked you to look at alternative scenarios for relapse and for lowering uptake of smoking initiation. And I asked you to put in place some other outcome measures. What did those outcome measures involve? Uh, sort of other, other measures that, that would in, indicate the, the results over time of, of a scenario, for example. Anyone, what did those involve? They involved, begins with S, smoking, right? I, I, I talked about the prevalence of Current smokers, former smokers, and never smoked. The fraction of people in the population for each of those. I left one important outcome out. And we'll come back to that. I left it out. I left it out because I thought it would be a, a bridge too far path for you for today. Um, okay, so um, that, that was our, our goal. And in the process, we went and added some graphs and stuff like that. But why don't I do this, okay? And I'm gonna do it for memory, um, just for quickness. And you can tell me if I make an assumption that is different from what I told you. How's that for a bargain? Are we okay with that? Okay, so let's 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 jump into this. Um, so here we are, we are at version four and uh, I'm going to call this version, what did I tell you to save it as, version five? Five, okay, here we go. Okay, great. Um, so. The key to, to altering the assumption about quitting was I put it in place a cessation rate. As long as this is hard coded, like six times per year, people relapse um, once every two months, you know, I, I can't really alter that easily, right? It's, it's hardwired into the model. So an important thing here is to add parameters. I realize I may be doing this in a 
kind of a different order than I asked you to. Okay, so let's go and add a parameter for this. Now this parameter will be shared around among all people. So where does it live in this model? In main indeed, in main. Um, just like we had cessation right there, I'm going to go add here uh, the relapse rate. Uh, relapse rate, come on. Um, and, and I'm going to add a, I'm going to drag it down here, initiation rate, okay? Um, so, so each of these is going to govern, there we go, different components of the process. Okay, relapse, its default value was six. It was every two months. Um, so six times per year, every two months. Remember, this is a chance per unit time of relapsing. So it's perfectly fine that it's, it's not a probability that it has to be between zero and one. It's, it's probability density, it's a temporal probability density, chance per unit time. And here the unit time is year. And so six times per year. Yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing you know, uh, inconsistent or illogical about that. And the initiation rate, what, what did I have it in the model? Anyone remember? What, what, what was it in the, by default in point, point one, I think? Point one, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. So we'll go back here and we'll make it point one. Um, okay, those would be the default values. That's, those are values if I don't override it. Those are the reference values. Great. Um, now, if I change those, will the model change right now? No, why not? What do I have to do? I have to actually actualize them, right? I, I have to, well, I don't know why color is, is moving around. Um, uh, I have to make this main dot and relapse rate, right? Right? Um, make it, in fact, it says relapse rate, but it wasn't, in fact, enforced until I do this, main dot initiation, right? Okay, okay, now, now we're... Token with gas. Okay, great. Um, but I want to look at some additional outcomes from this model. I want to look at outcomes associated with current, former, and never smoker, right? How do I do that? Where do I go? Again, I'm mixing together um, here some conceptual points and some specifics of anyone. I think it's a good and why we need to roll in one for the University of Saskatchewan. Uh, has graduated quite and sought to, to, to use this tool. Um, so it is one I'd like to emphasize a bit. And so um, uh, suppose I, I want to compute the fraction of people in the population that are never smoked with current smokers and former smokers. Where do I go? Where do I, where, where can I nicely compute those things? Maine and where in Maine? Yeah. Population, yeah. And the and population has associated with it what? Statistics. statistics, statistics indeed. Statistics, ladies and gentlemen, galore. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to do this plus. Um, okay. And I'm going to do, um, what did I ask you to do it? Uh, prevalence of, 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 of uh, current smokers that I could. Yeah. What was the name though? Okay. Okay, okay, uh, so yeah, so I, I often like to give the sort of substantive part, the most important part of the name first, and I'll say fractional prevalence since I called that above. Um, commonly uh, with a term of art, we'll, we'll eventually drop that. Okay, fine, so it's the, it's the fractional prevalence. So how do we compute a fraction here? We did it last time, right? It was this little trick. If someone is a current smoker, we'll make it one, otherwise we'll make it zero. So how do we tell if someone's a current smoker? How do we tell? Here's a person. How do we tell if they're a current smoker? Sorry? Exactly. And Rashid? Bang on. Okay. Um, great. Excellent. Uh, good, uh, Mr. Rashid. That's excellent. Um, so item dot in state person. Why person? Why do I have to say person? Because it's a... Yeah, it's a class. It's a static variable of the class. A current smoker isn't something for each person that's different. It's one thing for the entire class. That's a Java thing, but it's a concept that occurs in many object-oriented languages. Great. Um, and is this all I have to put? No. What do I have to put else? 
Mark. Yes, good. One point is otherwise this, because we're we're taking the average over a value, and we want people who are current smokers to be one, and we want those who are not current smokers to be zero, right? Okay, great, 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 and we'll we'll just do two more just like this, right? Um, there we go. Okay, sure. So this one will be former smoker, right? Um, uh, former smoker, uh, and we will just copy this, right? Um. I should have actually done this duplicate. Uh, I, I don't know why I didn't do duplicate. Um, uh, okay, and this will be former. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and then we'll do initiation, right? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna deep this six this one. I'm gonna copy this one just to spare myself time. Okay, fine. And this will be uh, never smoker, right? Never smoker fractional prevalence. And I'm gonna ask if they're in what state. Yes, good. Okay. Okay. Fine. Fine. Okay. That's great. Um, so now if we run the model, uh, we will, and we run it with the baseline with a thousand. Here we go. Okay. Um, there we go. And if we go, we look at population, we'll see. Yeah, well, a lot of prevalence for for all these different things, right? Um, never smokers are uh, shrinking here, and we have a growing prevalence of current and former smokers. Okay, great. Well, that's not great. But okay, um, um, grim situation. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, now let's uh, go create a create a graph of this, right? Um, so I'm gonna go out of uh, time plot, yeah, sure, and go add it in here and. We will go stick this here. I'm hoping by seeing me do these things, you also get ideas for pursuing take home exercises and assignments to make your life easier. Okay, so here. Um, so I'll call it smoking status time plot. Often I like to give the name of the thing so I know when I see the name what it is. Um, but just at smoking status, you know, it wouldn't be kind of blunt. I don't know what it is. Okay, so we'll have never smoker. Um, this will be this will be green, um, and uh, the value of this will be what? Who can tell me? Where do I go find the the? the... Yeah, okay, main dot. Uh, okay, uh, give me a second. Um, uh, prevalence. I should really say prevalence of never smoking. All right. I mean to be to give it a nice name. Okay, main dot. Uh, so it doesn't have to be in main. We are in main. We're in main. So what do I say? You got it. Population dot. Well, in this case, it's never smoking fractional prevalence, right? Um, and this one doesn't have a nice copy, but I can I can go like that, and then uh, this will just be. This is just like chopping green onions or something. So so I'll just go go copy it down here. Yeah, for um, and uh, ooh, no, 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 um. Okay, uh, so there we go. Um, and uh, pop, uh, so current no smoking, so this will be current smoking, fractional prevalence, and this will be population, come on, come on, uh, dot former smoking pre fractional prevalence. Okay, happy, happy. Um, okay, so we have these. Uh, it plots for uh, every year. It updates it for a uh, hundred years, and it does the latest hundred fine. Um, and I'm going to run this now, and we will see uh, the unhappy chart uh, put out. Uh, unhappy because it betrays a, a troublingly high prevalence of heart disease and smoking. Okay, um, so here we go. What's the most common uh, smoking status? Does anyone say? Current and medium. That's the red, right? How about after that? What's below that? Uh, former. Former. Okay. And then below, what's the green one down at the bottom? Yeah. How many how many never smokers are at the end? Uh, one hundred years. Zero indeed. Um a very grim tidings. Yes. It's it's zero at the end. Um now I want you to mark this curve. To, to make a note of this of this green curve. We're going to come back to it. Okay. 
to refer to it as sort of the substance part of the law. Does that remind you of a certain curve I've drawn up on yonder board? Yeah, one divided by that. It is one divided by something, but it can be written often. It's written with a, with a minus sign in the x minus instead. What does that look like? What sort of curve does this look like? One. Okay, uh, the green one from over to the to the power of minus m plus e. Uh, okay, so so these are all in the right area. It looks like, ladies and gentlemen, our old friend this. Oh, it's my friend. I hope it'll soon be your friend. Hopefully, after this lecture, be your friend and not your forever enemy. <laughs> okay, but uh, so so this is equal to one over what? When you have an exponent, you have a minus in the numerator. It's equal to one over one over e to the alpha, right? So it is true that it's the inverse. That's what. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, um, you can multiply these two things to become one, right? Uh -huh. Um, yeah, um, exercise those muscles, okay? Exercise those mental muscles, it's a good thing. Um, okay, so we'll come back to this. Is this from one agent or is this from many agents? This is the fraction of all agents, right? So, this is a collective phenomenon, each agent is governed here by what? Each agent, their probability of remaining in the never smoker state. How is that dictated here? So that's coming from many, many agents. Each of whom have what sort of chance of going for unit time of leaving? By default, it's what? 0 0.1, yeah, 10% chance per year. And you notice that it leads to the fraction of people who remain never smokers going down as this. Again, we're going to come back to this for, for the, the real deeper substance of today's uh, discussion. But okay. Okay. Um, so, so that was grim. That was our base one. Do we have the scenarios added for these two things I've added yet? The alternative scenarios? No, we added the parameters, but I haven't added the scenarios. So let's go do that. I'm going to copy this. Um, well, we could copy this. Uh, it, why do I copy it? Because we can get all the settings with it, all those goodies. Um, hello. Um, so uh, here we'll we'll make it population a thousand. Um, whoa, 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 oh, I, I did I did something bad. Okay. Well, fortunately, it it won't like it, and so it'll change it back. Um, okay. Bad. Okay. Um, so here we go. I copied it. What? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I I did something strange. I'm gonna delete this. I, I meant to copy this and paste it, and somehow it it yielded another scenario and it changed its name and bad things happen. Okay, so here we go. Population a thousand, and I'll say smoking relapse intervention and smoking. Initiation intervention. Okay, there we go. So what does the smoking relapse intervention have to do relative to the baseline? These I copied the baseline. That's this one here. I should really call it baseline. Baseline a thousand. Baseline a thousand population or whatever. But uh, okay, fine. So those are the baseline parameters. What do I need to change if I want to be a relapse intervention? Uh, you need to relapse. Yeah, I need to to is it would we try to make them more likely to relapse or less likely to relapse? Well, that's right. Okay, we'll, we'll lower it by 50% instead of increasing by 50%. Happy, happy. Okay, great. Now I'm going to copy the baseline and I will, boom, I will go and I will go create another one of these and I'll make it, I'll just copy the name here so we can get all this. And, um, there we go, and then we'll make a smoke initiation, right? Okay, happy, happy, happy. This is a great thing. Um, okay, and the initiation, would it be better if we lower it or raise it? Lower it, 0.05, right? We're lower by 50%, yeah. Okay, fine, fine. Yeah. Sorry? 
for the initiation for initiation uh uh, do, 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 uh this one um assumes a rate of initiation of value 50 percent below the baseline rate um i don't i don't think so i i, I think it's uh yeah i'm not sure where that idea came in but uh yeah, you you could try to find it some some other time in short. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, okay. So, so we had the baseline. I showed it before, and I asked you to make note of it. But I'll show it one other time so we can just see what the uh, the levels are, and we can compare at least in our head to them. Okay. Fine. Um, so here we go. And and what we see is roughly speaking, we have a prevalence of current smoke here, point six. We have a prevalence of former smoke here of of somewhere like 0.4 and basically at the end there's nobody i'm talking at the end and there's nobody who's former or who's a never smoker okay let's go take a look at smoking cessation that was after all the one we ran yesterday and by the way i should have looked at, at heart disease uh occurrence there the heart disease prevalence but i'm not gonna take the time to go back and look at that okay so here we go we have a heart disease prevalence of of, of about um 70 percent or so but we have um what have we done relative to the to the baseline? What was the trend? Anyone? What happened? Sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So before we had like 60, 40, right? 60 percent current, 40 percent uh former, and now we have both the same, right? Um, so that was the result of trying to get people to quit more. Okay, okay. How about if we uh, have them relapse? Okay. Um, uh, at least, oh, sorry, have them discourage them from relapsing, lower the rate of relapse. Okay, okay. Here we have uh, now. Uh, how does it change from baseline? Anyone? Way more former than current. Yeah. If you compare this to the last intervention, which of them was, was more favorable in terms of, of lowering uh, smoking? This one is more favorable. The current outpace current, uh, the, the former outpace current here. Former are higher in numbers than current, whereas in the last one, they were neck to neck, neck to neck, right? And here, you notice the prevalence of heart disease is below 60%. Last time, it was about 70%. Not ain't too bad, eh? Um, and now let's look at initiation. Now, initiation is a hard slog for a reason I'll tell you. Um, but uh, uh, I mean, in other words, in this model right now, it's 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 a hard road to hoe. Um, so here we it, it goes up, it's below, a bit below 70% at the end. Um, current smokers are actually still uh, just short of 60 percent yeah just just short of 60 percent here at the end um former smokers it doesn't really change these that much does it the the re the, the relative size of each of these because once one once one starts smoking those other rates govern who's in what current former right um uh but it does make one big change what's that uh, the number of the never smoking, there are some never smokers who stick on here. There's the never smokers who stick around. It doesn't go out entirely, but it's a tough road to hoe because over a hundred years, they're having this chance per year of 5% of starting to smoke, no matter how old they are. And that leads to this decrease. I don't know why it's brought here. Um, decrease of here. Here, e to the minus L plus D. So there's still very few of them at the end. It goes down less quickly, but it still goes down, right? It's the same old thread. Okay. Smiling at you, can't you see? Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so ladies and gentlemen, um that's that's good. Um we we see some trade-offs here. And Arlen brought up an excellent point, actually, which is, you know, could we think about combining, right? Heck, you want to try that? 
Let, let, let's do that together. Uh, what do you think? Let, it, it, let's try it together. Let's do, um, let's have one that has full court press, right? It, it has all of these, okay? Let, let's try that. Um, so we'll do, well, maybe one step at a time. Let's do cessation and relapse first, just so we're clear about it. So I'm gonna copy, since we'll layer cessation and relapse uh, uh, efforts, I'm gonna uh, copy and paste it. Yes, uh-huh. Oh, you wanna have access to it before this? Sure, 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 sure. That sounds like a, a, a sterling proposition, okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, save that and I will go here and I will post it post haste, okay? Um, okay. Uh, there we go. And uh, it is in my models area. There we go. Happy, 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 happy. Okay, it is posted. There we go. Version five. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are on to version six. Version six. There we go. Hey, hey, get back there. Okay. Um, okay, so we're, we're, we'll do both together. I'm going to lay them together. I want to move quickly because we have to get on to some other things here. But uh, I do like this idea. So here we go. And now we have this one. I copied, pasted. And I'm going to say smoking cessation and uh and relapse intervention what what it lacks in creativity it make up makes up for it like um i i rather like that one even if you don't um uh okay so um cessation rate is higher went from four to six and relapse rate will be if we want to help people it's, does it have to be lower or higher lower we want to prevent people from relapsing right so we're going to put it down to to three times per year maybe it's through nicotine patch or maybe it's through social support efforts or what have you um um nicorette um chewing gum uh what what whatever whatever is is working there okay there we go boom um and um now we see former smokers, what, what, what do we see relative to what we previously saw with each and isolate? Is this better than our original results of focusing on smoking cessation? Kind of, yeah. Because we have now over 60% former. We have below, we have something close to 30%. Um, uh, 35 or something percent, uh, former, right? I'm uh, sorry, current, current former are, are, are above 60, and then we have current or maybe around 35 or something, right? So, two thirds, one third, which is not an accident. Um, if, if you actually do the math, uh, and uh, we will, um, uh, you could actually add these up if you had three over three plus six. It's three over nine and one third, um, exactly, um, are going to be current smokers and, and the others will be uh, former. Um, did we help the, the um, stop people from becoming smokers there? No, no, we'd have to further lower, lower that. Um, but I want to, um, and, and so we could do that, and uh, that might be a good exercise, but I want to move on to something else. There's another key outcome in this model, an outcome of huge significance to each and every one of them that is not currently captured in the output reported by the model. What is that? Keep going, young man. Yes. I think it is actually the, the, the number of people who actually avoid using that process have just multiplied. multiplied. Well, how okay. many of them uh, have yet become part of them uh, who are at our position? From uh, the pure, you know, concept or form of oh, okay. I mean, you could you could ask how many of those with heart disease did so when they were current smoker former. That's one, but there's something even more basic involving that very state chart that is not captured. 
death. Like, we're not capturing the number that die, right? As soon as they're out of the model, we're not capturing the prevalence of our species, right? We're not capturing the prevalence of current smoker, former smoker, or, or never smoker. They're out of the model, and and yet we're not taking that outcome into effect. Yes, our model. Actually, uh, show that when you actually when you're on the model, we show that how many people die. But if you look at the model, right? sorry, we right now we show how many people die. Yeah. Um. Okay. No, we don't. We're not reporting the number. We could in our heads try to calculate it, right? But but there's no there's no. This is the fraction of people who have heart disease of those who are living. This is the fraction of those of those living that would have never are never smokers, current smokers, former smokers. But never is there a report anywhere that says how many people have died. Now you're right that we could compute it if we said, oh well, right now. There are 493 people, we could figure out, okay, that means 507 have died. But it's kind of up to us to do that, and we don't have a nice characterization. So let's keep track of that. Yes, yes. Um, so let's 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 go and and uh, add that in. Okay. Um, so uh, how do we keep track of the number of people that have died? I mean, one way is what I said. I mean, you could subtract the current population size from the start. Um, but let's suppose we want to keep track of how many people died of heart disease. How can we do that? How do we keep track of something that changes? Something like color or something like uh, hazard rate. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Rashid. So in the time we didn't use the time kit, we were talking about the number of people that died. Yeah. And, and how can we keep a count with a incremental? Yes, I can mention the variable. That's right. Okay. So let's do that. Now, where would that variable live? Would it live at the person level or live at main level? Main indeed, because it's a characteristic of the whole model, right? Um, we're not counting the number of times this person died. It's not like a cat that dies nine lives or something. Um uh it's it's uh in main. Okay, so we're gonna add a what to main? Speak on yeah. variable indeed. This will be um uh count. Um, heart uh, disease mortality. Um, uh, uh, heart, heart disease deaths. That that uh, that that's kind of better. Uh, what sort of variable will it be? Will it be a double? Will it be an object, an agent, a color, or a integer? It'll be an integer, ladies and gentlemen. It starts at zero. Okay, fine. Um, we're going to say you know this is relative from the start of the model, right? Okay. Kind of it. Okay, so where does it have to change? That's an aspect now of model state. That's part of model state, although it's an empty phenomenal part. Where does it have to change? Yeah, so so we could do it in the final state, but the final state can be entered via two routes. It would be more elegant if we did it where? And the handler for the it, for the transition, ladies and gentlemen, transitions here of handlers. They okay, you can have an action associated with the transition. What does this action do? Rashid said it earlier. It does what? Increments it in heat. Okay, so now there's different levels of computational comfort in this room, in this class. So I'm going to phrase this in three different ways to those different levels of comfort. I could say main dot count heart disease deaths equals this thing plus one, right? But that's kind of wordy and you got to kind of look on both sides. You know, is it, is it changing this one to be one bigger than it is or is it based on some other variable? So often we will say instead plus equal one, right? That's a nice one, but in in Java in the C family of languages, you could say this even more short. Plus plus, plus indeed. I think Sorry, I mean, you always do it in Java. I mean, Java yes, Java. yes, it's, in Java you can do it. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's part of the C C language family. Been around since nineteen seventies, and um, yeah, um, okay. So we incremented it, ladies and gentlemen. We incremented that variable. We made it one bigger than it was otherwise. Okay, great. And now let's go add an outcome. Let's go add a plot for this. Shall we not? We shall. Um, let's plot it out. 
um uh okay um and here we go boom, boom, boom. and time is moving on and i need to move on to another topic here that will enrich some of this discussion but this will be um uh mortality plot mortality plot these other ones are fractions so they don't really play nicely with a count of people that um that have died um um and uh i i could make it a fraction of the people that have died that would be kind of nice wouldn't it that would be pretty nice wouldn't it yeah yeah a fraction that have died then i could actually put it on this this one but okay so here we go um mortality plot um, i'm gonna say um cumulative uh fraction of um um who have died who have died um okay um great and i'm gonna give it a value and what value will it be well i have this count right count heart disease death and actually it's not who have died who have died from heart disease right now if i say this um and I, I don't even have to make it cumulative. I just say fraction or died from heart disease by a certain point. I mean, it, by nature, cumulative. But if I made it a count, is that a fraction? No. So really, it should be this count divided by the total population. But you got to be careful in languages like Java and indeed the, the C language family. When you have an integer quantity and you divide by another integer quantity, what sort of division do you form? Integer division. So you divide three by four, and it gives you back what? Zero, ladies and gentlemen. Zero. You don't want that. You don't want that. You want to cast it to a double. You want to make it a double. I know, I know. It's a it's a pain. Um, but uh but it's it's something you got to do in order to prevent yourself from getting whacked on the on the side of the head by you. And you could do it in the numerator and denominator. It's enough to do it in one of them. But sure, I'll do it in both uh, to, to make it. Because these are both integers. Population size and count heart disease deaths are integers. So you just tell it, treat them as double. Treat them as real numbers. Okay. There we go. Um, okay. Um, uh, so those are what I call casts, right? Those are type conversions. You've seen those before? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. My my condolences. Um, uh, okay. So um, so let's uh, go and um, and and plot this out. Um, uh, boom, 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 and there we go. Here's the fraction population with heart disease. By the way, it ran the baseline. Um, prevalence of current smoker and former smoker. And then the fraction of people who have died from heart disease. Let's watch this one. 60 some odd percent. That's sort of 65%. Is it not? It's grim. And that's a grim statistic. Died from, not just died. Died from heart disease. Let's try it with the uh, smoking cessation intervention that you folks built together with me. That's great. Um, and here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so now we have eh, still about 70% of the population with heart disease. We've lowered current smoking relative to former smoking. So they're neck and neck. And now we have just over 60% of people who died from heart disease. Still pretty bad, right? Let's look at the relapse reduction intervention, preventing people from relapsing into smoking. How would that impact these things? Well, it lowers the, the um, by the end, you know, just barely, it's about 60% people with heart disease, but the prevalence of current smoking is, is lower actively than the than former smoking. And, and it's also about 60% that have still died from heart disease. We somehow just didn't make that big impact. I'm going to lower smoking initiation. And 
here we've just lowered it um, by uh, to, to half of it and still you know over time most people still gain it so so we have something like uh, somewhere below 70 percent with heart disease current smoker and former smoker are pretty much as they were before but we have lowered this below 60 percent here below 60 percent in guys with heart disease So you could look at the different, uh, that's from, that's from uh, heart disease. Yes, um, uh, that's right. Um, some of them developed it without smoking, evidently, some with smoking. Um, ladies and gentlemen, how could we say, how would we compare if we want to see no smoking at all? You tell me, how could we do that? I, I want to see how many people, what fraction of the population died from smoking, from heart disease, if we had no smoking whatsoever in the model. Zero initiation. Monty has got it. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. So we're going to have, uh, we'll copy this one with alternative initiation, and we'll go paste, and we will um, uh, go to the new one, and we will say, um, no smoking initiation. And what will the smoking initiation rate be? Matthias said it first. What is it? Sorry? Zero. Zero. No one, ladies and gentlemen, is going to start smoking. Okay. Do you think anyone will die from heart disease? Yeah, why would they die from heart disease? Yeah, it's a smaller rate, right? But they could still get it. They could still get it. Remember, remember the heart disease hazard rate for never smokers was still half a percent per year. And so we have something like 0 0.22 or something. 22% of the population dies of, would die of heart disease even without smoking. Right? The prevalence of never smokers is what? One. That's why it's way up here, right? The prevalence of current and former smokers is what? 100%. Current and former? No, uh, yeah. Yeah. The fraction of the population with heart disease is like what? 0.115 or something. And yeah, you can go see. Basically, no one's uh no one started smoking, right? Um Current and former prevalence, uh, prevalence of the population is current and former is zero. A fraction that are never smokers are one, in other words, 100 percent. Heart disease fraction is about 11.4 percent, and uh, the 23 people with, with heart disease. So, so even with our efforts across uh, several of these things, we are, um, you know, across. Uh, uh, different types of uh, interventions, we're still facing a really troubling um, occurrence of, of heart disease. I'm going to run the combined one, uh, the so-called Ardalan uh, special. And here we've lowered it also below 60%. It's like 55% if we have both relapse and prevention uh, efforts. Okay. Do you want me to post this? Post or not? Go. Yeah, you could. That might be a nice uh, thing to do with the model. Um, no, that doesn't necessarily say if they died with heart disease and they were smokers at the time, did they definitely die because of smoking? Not necessarily. You know, like, it, it's hard to say. But here, we the way in which we probe these things is we ask counterfactuals. We have without smoking, what would it have been, right? And with smoking, what would it have been? At an individual level, that sort of attribution is very hard, right? Was it those fatty meals I ate, you know, every night in my 20s? Or was it, you know, the fact that I never, you know, never got out of the couch in my 50s or whatever? Um, you know, it's, it's hard to give that attribution. Was it my pack a day smoking, you know? Um, but yeah, we could say how many people die while being smokers from heart disease versus while not being smokers, well, we never smokers, you know, as I said, here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay. Um, okay. So, folks, um, hopefully that gives you um, some uh, some additional ideas here. Now, um, I really want to drill down partly because for those still working with assignment one or this, this may help out some of my comments here. I want to go to some slides. So I'm going to stop this and we're going to